Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you guys are having a great day today. For this week's video, we're gonna be calling out Fender and Gibson. Let's jump right in. All right, so let's start with Fender and in particular, the Strat. Now 2017 was a pretty good year for the high-end Strats, but not so much for everybody else. So the high-end Strats uh, on the Elite Series finally got a, a really nice contoured heel joint, something that Music Man's been doing on their guitars for years. Um, high-end guitars and low-end guitars, something Fender could definitely learn from. I'd like to see that contoured heel joint brought across their entire line. There's absolutely no reason why they can't, um, other than maybe their vintage reissues. They can keep those vintage correct for people who like that stuff, but absolutely no reason why their Mexican made, uh, their Mexican standard, their American standard, uh, can't have that beautiful contoured heel joint as well. Gripe number two is the American Professional and American Elite got pop-in arms with set screws, something that again they could have done uh, decades ago but finally brought it to their high-end guitar so no more you know screwing the trim arm in screwing it out and never getting it exactly where you had it before um, really sloppy and poor design to be honest um, so i'd like to see them bring that to their mexican standard so on the squire side they've had two point trims on the squire deluxe and the squire standard and uh, of course on the American uh, series, they've had two point trims for a while. No reason they can't bring that to the Mexican series. The Mexican standards are supposed to be their more modern sounding, sounding guitars. They have hotter output ceramic pickups, really fat, nice sound. Um, so why don't they bring that tech? And when your competitors are doing it, that's another great reason to jump on the bandwagon before your customers go to other manufacturers. So Music Man's done that with their Sterling line. So pop in arm, set screw, two point trim. PRS has that on their SE. And of course, GNL's done that. So three of your main competitors are bringing their best trim techs to their mid range guitars. It's time you did that Fender. All right, now onto Telecasters, one of my favorite guitars ever made. Uh, I have one big gripe with Tellys, and that's the center position is not hum canceling. So there's absolutely no reason why Fender cannot have a hum canceling center position on every single Tele they make. Um, I just don't see why you wouldn't do that. It's better for the player, um, especially a gigging player where you don't know how the electronics are gonna be. Um, if it's gonna be dirty electronics and it's gonna just cause your single coils to hum like crazy, just popping it into the center position will get rid of all that hum. Um, it's easy to do. Fender, please do it. All right, so now on to Gibson. My main gripe is with the high performance series Les Paul. Now this is a very sophisticated instrument and I think Gibson's done a great job in almost every area except for one. Now, the body on them, um, it's got modern weight relief, so if you pop the maple caps off, it's like Swiss cheese under there. They've remo removed most of the, the mahogany on the body and then just put a maple cap on. So you wouldn't notice, but it makes it really light. Um, doesn't affect the tone, it just sounds great, plays great. Now you've got a very sophisticated electronic system. So you've got all these push-pull pots. Um, so you can split coils or tap coils. You can choose that via a dip switch in the back. Um, you can go in phase, out of phase, all sorts of things. They've really redone the whole electronics on it. Very sophisticated system. Um, they redid the fret height in, I think, 2015. So they're lower profile frets. So if you play hard, you're not gonna put it out of tune. Another great feature. Uh, Tone Pro's locking bridge and saddle, great stuff. Um, titanium nut, so a nut that actually can, you know, cope with the demands put on a modern instrument. So that was a great, great feature as well. So they've gone over the whole instrument, um, even put robot tuners on the headstock. Everything's super modern. Uh, they cut back the heel joint so you have better upper fret access. They've thought of everything and it did a great job on it, except for the headstock angle. Now in the past, Gibson had actually reduced the headstock angle and added a volute to make it stronger because so many guitars were coming in under warranty with broken headstocks or cracked necks. Um, and this was a great decision for Gibson. It made the necks better for the players, so you got a, a stronger, more stable neck, and they had to fulfill fewer warranties with broken necks, so great for the company, great for the player. But people complained, and so it went back to 17 degrees uh, tilt, which is way too much for a modern instrument. So my gripe is on the modern um, high performance series where they've gone over the entire instrument, made it way more playable, way more usable, way more flexible uh, for the modern player, but they left that headstock angle probably because they were scared of what people would say. But I, 
I don't know. I mean, they put robot tuners on the headstock. If they're scared of what people would say, uh, that would have been the issue. But anyway, so yeah, I'd like to see on only on the high performance series, them bring it back to 14 degrees, which is what Epiphone currently uses, owned by Gibson. Epiphone's smart. They know if you reduce that headstock angle, still sounds great, still sustains. Um, my Epiphone's out sustain my Gibson's. Has nothing to do with sustain, um, but they have to they have fewer breakages and they have to uh, fulfill fewer warranties. So Epiphone's done it right. Um, and on the high performance series, I'd love to see Gibson reduce that angle to 14 or even 10. Since we're on a roll, let's talk about what I'd like to see from some other manufacturers in 2018 and 2019. First up is Music Man. Now, the Music Man guitar is probably one of the best engineered and designed instruments ever made. From the headstock design, uh, no tilt back, no string trees, nothing. All of them have locking tuners, beautiful headstock design, uh, awesome contoured heel joint so you have full access, pop in trim arm. They've been doing this stuff for ages, long before companies like Fender um, you know, were doing any of that stuff. Um, you can even put your Music Man guitar in a case with the trim arm attached. So they've designed their cases so you can just close your case with your trim arm in. You know, stuff like that is really appreciated from musicians who are always going to rehearsal, taking their guitars in and out of their cases. So great stuff, but there's a couple things I'd like to see from Music Man in 2018, 2019. First up, I'd like to see some signature series guitars in the Music Man lineup. I mean, they only have like uh, Albert Lee, Steve Lukather, uh, Steve Morris, 14,000 versions of the Petrucci model, uh, the St. Vincent, who else? The Axis, the Eddie Van Halen. I mean, they barely have any. Seriously though, if you go to their website, they have like two or three non-signature guitars on their website. Everything else is signature. So I'd like to see some more traditional designs from Music Man um, that don't have other artists' names attached to it because not everybody wants to play a signature series guitar, even though they're amazing instruments. All right, now onto Ibanez, another one of my favorite guitar companies. What I'd love to see from them in 2018, 2019 is to bring a couple more humbucker single single guitars into the market, especially in the high end. I don't think there's a single one in the prestige lineup right now. I think there is one in the premium, um, but it's only available in like raw mahogany or like natural ma mahogany finish. There's not a lot of options. Um, so I'd love to see something back in the prestige series for HSS. Um, that would be amazing. Next up, I'd love to see them partner with like DiMarzio or Duncan to bring some decent pickups into their lower end guitars. Now, if you pick up uh, an Ibanez for like 250 bucks to like 600 bucks, uh, the, their stock pickups are not good. You know, they sound terrible clean. And I know it's just always been a huge weak spot for Ibanez uh, getting decent pickups in their lower end guitars. So, you know, something that like the Duncan design pickups that you sometimes find in lower end guitars, um, certain manufacturers have been partnering. I'd love to see Ibanez do that so that you can get like right across their entire lower end range, get some DiMarzio's or some, you know, Seymour Duncan's or something just to really improve the quality uh, of their lower end instruments. Now the next one is purely personal, but on their Artist Series guitars, fantastic instruments uh, from top to bottom, great value, um, but I really hate the, the decal or the logo on the headstock. It's sort of like this weird tribal thing, and it just kind of flies in the face of you know the whole aesthetic of the instrument for me. Love the little headstock design, um, everything about them. They're, they're just awesome instruments but that logo just sort of doesn't really go with the aesthetic of the rest of the instrument for me. So I'd love to see them go uh, to something more traditional, something more classic uh, for those artist series guitars. All right, so now let's jump to Tom Anderson and Sir. These are two makers at the upper echelon of instrument craftsmanship. Uh, these guys just make astonishingly a beautiful and playable instruments, uh, but very, very expensive. So they've done a great job, um, you know, yeah, surviving, carving out that, that niche product. Both of them just amazing instruments. What I'd love to see from them is something that PRS has done. So PRS, again, started with very, very high-end, expensive instruments. And over time, they've brought out their S2 series and their SE series. So they've diversified their lineup. And so now if you want a PRS, there's almost something in everybody's price range. And I'd love to see the same thing from Sir and from Tom Anderson. I'd love to see them bring out, you know, 
American made guitars or maybe overseas uh, guitars for like a thousand bucks. So I could go out and buy a Sur if I wanted it or a Tom Anderson and not have to spend five grand. Next up is GNL, another one of my favorite guitar manufacturers. Uh, first of all, I've got, I've got to give them props for making one of the only single coil pickups with adjustable pull pieces. Another great Leo Fender uh, design. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to feature them on the channel this year. We'll see what we can do. Um, but yeah, awesome. It puts the power in the player's hands. You can scoop your mids, you can boost your mids, you can just change the pull pieces however you want to get the sound that you want. Awesome uh, design from GNL. Now what I'd like to see from them in 2018 and 2019 is maybe get some artist deals. You know, learn from Music Man. Maybe not as many as Music Man, I don't know. They have a lot. But uh, anyway, get some artist deals going and try to get back in the big retail stores. Um, where I live, it's almost impossible to find a GNL. So I'd love to see them get uh, their instruments in stores and do a big marketing push. All right, next up is Epiphone. So Epiphone is owned by Gibson, so I'd love to see Gibson do what PRS is doing. So PRS has done a great job bringing their top end features down to their SE line. Um, every year they refresh that at PRS, you get another great feature from their core line, which is their USA line. So their SEs just kept, keep getting better and better and you know better value for money. So I'd love to see Gibson do that with Epiphone. Now firstly, the most requested feature, probably of all time in regards to Epiphone, is to bring the Gibson headstock shape to Epiphone guitars. I don't know why they don't do that if they feel it's watering down the Gibson brand too much. I don't know, it's still gonna say Epiphone on the headstock. Everyone's gonna still know it's an Epiphone. Um, I'd love to, to see them get rid of that Epi headstock design. It's, it's not very aesthetically pleasing and bring the Gibson one or even the ones that are found on like Lucille and the Sheratons. It's a, it's a more pleasing design. I'd love to see them bring that to their main Les Pauls. A couple other random things I'd love to see in 2018, 2019. I'd love to see somebody come in and save Parker guitars. They need somebody to come in and help finance them again. Um, they've got all their designs. It's a little polarizing in terms of you know how they look, but really ahead of their time in a lot of ways. So I'd love to see Parker's uh, start to be manufactured again. Another thing I'd absolutely love to see is Yamaha bring back high-end Pacificas. They made some killer, absolutely amazing super strats back in the day. Um, and now the Pacifica line is kind of down towards like the, the entry level, a, a couple uh, mid-range guitars, um, but I'd love to see them make like, I don't know, something from like a thousand bucks to 1500 bucks, just, uh, you know, like their old school killer super strats. And finally, stainless steel frets. I'd love to see it somewhere in every manufacturer's lineup, either as an option or as a model. It just makes sense. If somebody wants to buy one instrument and play on it for the next 20 years, they should have that option. That way they don't have to worry about refrets, anything, they can just pick it up and put hours and hours of playing into it. Um, I don't know, the technology's there. It can't be that much more expensive. I'd love to see it somewhere in every manufacturer's line. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. Let me know in the comments below what your most requested features are from various guitar manufacturers. I'd love to hear from you guys and what you guys would like to see maybe in the next couple years um, from the major manufacturers. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching, you guys. We'll see you guys next week with a new video. Take care. Oh yeah, and I forgot about the S-Series switch cover, which we talked about last week. That thing's disgusting. Ibanez, get rid of it.